YouTubers, Mike Martin's here, Mike Martin's channel. Thanks for joining me for another housing crisis video. This one, things are changing, tables are turning in New Zealand. New Zealand softens ban on foreigners, home ownership, an amended bill. So, guys, remember the new um, Bill uh, Ty Ford, the guy that was the housing minister now for New Zealand, housing affordability out of control in New Zealand. Uh, people basically can't make ends meet. Twenty people to a house, meth tested homes. People being put up in 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 in, in uh, hotels because they can't afford. People sleeping rough. Well, New Zealand's been ha it's it's been having a, a really bad last three four years with its housing crisis. It's been severely out of control, and the new the new the new uh, powers to be that got elected in recently, she basically um, the new prime minister basically passed a law uh, saying no more enough is enough. No more foreign buying. No more foreign investing. Uh, the uh, New Zealand property is, proper is getting bought out, and we just have no way of, of controlling what's, what, what our future of our country is going to head, where it's heading, right? So Wellington Routers, New Zealand's government on Tuesday softened its stance on foreign ownership of homes, rewriting a proposal law banning non-residents from investing in housing. So they're rewriting the law, okay? The amended law would allow non-residents to own up to 60% of large New apartment buildings. There is currently no ban on foreign ownership of land. Oh, houses or apartments. The amendment bill will also exempt Singaporeans from foreign ownership ban under free trade agreement, FTA, between the two countries. The law still needs parliament's approval to take force, but the changes underscore the government's hope of attracting foreign investment in large res residential developments to tackle shortage of housing that has driven up prices and rents. Okay, back to the shortage of housing. What's the amount of empty homes in New Zealand right now that are sitting on foreign money that's just parked there and no one lives in them? That's we got to get to that because I can I bring that up in every video because you know if it's a thousand homes, a thousand times three people per home, you're looking at three thousand people misplaced. A hundred thousand, um, thirty thousand homes like in San Diego is like thirty-eight thousand empty homes. For example, an example, then uh, Toronto GTA, 90,000, 90, multiply that by three. That's how many displaced people you have. And New Zealand isn't the biggest country on the planet, if you know your geography. The law still permits approval to take force and the changes underscored move down. I read that. This law will ensure that the market for our homes in New Zealand is a New Zealand market, not an international one. Associate Finance Minister David Parker said in an emailed statement, this will help first home buyers get their foot in the property ladder. The Real Estate Institute of New Zealand, Renzi, Renza, which lobbied for the amendments, welcomed the changes, but said it still woolly opposed to ban. We don't believe that the ban will resolve any housing affordability issues given. The proportion of sales to overseas buyers is low. Ren's chief economy uh, executive, sorry, Brandy Norwell, chief executive, said in a statement. Foreign ownership has attracted criticism in recent years, and New Zealand grapples with the housing crisis that has seen the average prices of the main city of Auckland almost double in the past decade and rise more than 60% nationwide. The country's labor-led coalition government, with popular 37-year-old uh, Jacinda, that's the girl I was talking about, her name is Jacinda, uh, Arden, to help them successfully campaign to lead September's election Foreign ownership has attracted criticism in recent years and New Zealand grapples with the housing crisis that has seen the average prices of the main city of Auckland almost double in the past decade and rise more than 60% nationwide. Yes, I reread that because I put it on pause. Had a, quite a couple of customers walk in. The country's labor-led coalition government with a popular 37-year-old Jacinda Arden at the helm. Remember Jacinta, she's the one that got... Uh, elected recently, successfully campaigned to the lead of September's election to promise to clamp down on house prices, price growth, and reduce high rates of homelessness in a part banning foreign owners. So guys, remember I was bringing that up in the last year and a half, her political um, platform, and I kept saying, you want to well, you want to be prime minister, president, or governor, or whatever, just tackle the housing issue, everyone will be on your side. And that's what she did, and that was smart. Pol Politically, to get her foot in the door. Uh, uh, official figures out this month showed that the overall level of foreign home buyers 
was relatively low, about 3% of property transfers nationwide, but was highly concentrated in certain areas as downtown Auckland and the southern uh, scenic um, hotspot of Queenstown. The majority of overseas buyers were from China and neighboring Australia, according to Statistics New Zealand. The government has said the ban would not apply to Australians and has been negotiated with Singapore. Those FTA New Zealand allows foreign ownership on whether to grant an exemption. So Jacinta's worked hard on her platform to get in and Bill Ty Bill or yeah, Bill Typhord, who's the housing minister right now in New Zealand, has been working out. Um, they have been construction, they have broke ground on affordable housing. Uh, and they have I've read articles on that. So New Zealand's headed in the right direction. Now they gotta start molding their policies around to start fitting the country's needs more than investors because like it's like New Zealand for sale. And when New Zealand's for sale, open for sale, it brings it attracts a lot of money. Yes, it does. Uh, it's relatively a safe country to har harbor your money. It's relatively a safe country to park your money, and that's what the problem is. It's it's politically stable. Uh, it's got um, you know it, it's got a good history of good track re record of treating investors well, and a lot of people are concerned uh, about losing the uh, New Zealand losing its sovereignty. The same things happening in Canada, UK, Australia. The United States of America, lots of countries, are, and, and, and even Jamaica. Look it up. Jamaica is under uh, a political buyout or a foreign buyout right now. Uh, political, political, not only political, but an economic takeover. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.